It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And apparently it is the end of times. We have this from CBN. Five reasons many Christians believe end times are upon us. Israel plays a major role. The funny thing is I heard this well before the Israel-Palestine conflict got so heated in recent history. I mean, obviously, it's been heated for some time, but this recent uh, attack and, and response and the escalation, well before this, we were talking about the signs that the end of days is upon us. For Christians, the argument is Jesus will return. For the Jews, it is the argument that the Messiah will finally appear. Jewish people don't believe the Messiah has uh, yet emerged and the Messianic era may be upon us. And Christians believe Jesus was the Messiah and will return again. It's very interesting. Uh, I, 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 I say that vaguely. I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but let's read this article from CBN. They say our culture has become increasingly captivated by apocalyptic themes and storylines with a plethora of popular TV shows and feature films embracing zombies, plagues and other terrifying end of day scenarios. But the idea of a future Armageddon like scenario isn't merely reserved for fictional plots, as the concept is deeply embedded in Christian theology, impacting the way believers have read and interpreted interpreted biblical scripture over the past two millennia. And with Hamas's horrific terror attack against Israel making headlines this month, it's no surprise prophecy discussions are ramping up. The conversation comes as many contemporary theologians and pastors believe the world is currently observing numerous signs that, that mirror the supposedly prophetic contents of verses in Old and New Testament books like Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelation. Some of these apparent signs, of course, involve Israel, which is why news of the nation sparks so much intrigue. Is that the reason? Perhaps. What has convinced these theologians and pastors that the end of times could be ramping up? That's a question I've covered in depth in my book, The Armageddon Code. Many of these theologians and pastors told me that sweeping moral decay, biblical disconnectedness, and ongoing violence in the Middle East are just a few of the prophetic markers they believe were foretold thousands of years ago in both the Old and New Testaments. But how can Christians leaders be so sure? Jesus himself foretold of his future second coming. The problem? Christ also proclaimed in Matthew 24, 36 that no one knows the day or the hour of his return. Well, the Bible proclaims that humanity cannot know the when. Jesus did reveal to the disciples some signs of his second coming in Matthew 24, 6 through 8. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Surely war has always been with us for the 20th and 21st century. Seen broader. Okay, <clears throat> so let's break it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is the argument that what Jesus said is upon us? Chaos in the Middle East, number one. With all this in mind, the first sign that some Bible scholars positing the world is either in or is rapidly approaching the end of times, cast in the Middle East. In recent years, the situation in the region has been raising more than a few eyebrows and the seemingly never ending tensions between Israel and her neighbors, most recently exemplified in the Hamas terror attack, continue to intensify. Number two, Hamas, the Islamic State and other bad actors. From Hamas's barbaric attack that killed at least 1,400 Israelis to the Islamic State's murderous and bloodthirsty quest for power. This plague nations across the globe, there's no shortage of chaos. Taking those events into account, many Bible experts will point out that some of the battles described in Scripture, clashes that they believe are still unfulfilled, are slated to take place in the Middle East. Many of the experts I interviewed could not but wonder if the groundwork is currently being set for the fulfillment of the Gog and Magog battles that are referenced in the book of Ezekiel and Revelation, a concept I address in detail in his book, The Armageddon Code. Israel's reemergence. That brings me to the next modern day phenomenon that has piqued the interest of Bible experts. The 1948 reemergence of Israel after a Jewish state was noticeably absent from the map for nearly 1,900 years. Here's why it matters. Futurists who see many Bible prophecies are being currently unfulfilled, as being currently unfulfilled, believe that the Old and New Testament scriptures consistently predicted that a state of Israel would once again emerge at some point in the future. Consider Ezekiel 36, 24, which was written 2,500 years ago includes the following words that are attributed to God. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. Futurists believe that the Old Testament verses clearly reference a future restoration of Israel that was unlike anything that unfolded prior to the end of the Holocaust in World War II. 
modern day Israel, is seen by these theologians and pastors as a super sign of the end of days to come. I cannot fathom how this modern day prophetic fulfillment, a super sign, can be ignored. Author Jeff Kinley, who takes a futurist approach, told me in interviews for the Armageddon Code. Other experts, though, would counter that verse, among others, related to the Babylonian captivity, which with the Jews were forcibly taken by King Nebuchadnezzar II and were held in Babylonia after being expelled from Judah following its conquest around 597 BC and not the recreation of Israel. 1948. Persian leader Cyrus the Great later permitted the Jews to head back to their land in 538 BC, which could be perceived as a fulfillment of those prophecies. But the temple and, the Jeru- and, and Jerusalem again would come under assault by the Romans in 70 AD, leaving the Jews scattered throughout the world for centuries. Shifts in morality is number four. The fourth issue that is sparking intrigue about the world's proximity to the end of days is the fact that American culture is changing at a rapid rate, with traditional understandings of marriage and gender transforming as a more progressive view on sexuality takes root. There's a sense among many that immorality is intensifying, which seems to be one of the biblical signs we are told to look for as love waxes cold and people become lovers of themselves. And five, last but not least, the spread of the gospel. The idea that the Christian gospel continues to be preached in even the most remote and hard to reach geographic areas throughout the world. This matters to many Bible experts due to the fact that Christ, after his resurrection, gave the disciples the commandment in Matthew 28, 19 to go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus and also mentioned this preaching of scripture throughout the world earlier in the book of Matthew. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Interesting. So there you have it. You know what I think? Wouldn't it be funny if like there is the second coming or depending on what you believe, the first coming of the Messiah, the son of God, whatever you want to call him. And they're just like, yo, y'all were totally off. You know what I mean? Like, like ignore polytheism and like the Hellenistic era where they're like the pantheon. I like the idea of the pantheon because it fits simulism so well. But imagine like there's a Messiah who comes and they're just like, this is what you guys believed. And then like there's an actual uh, imagine the Messiah, the Christ, second coming, first coming comes and actually and, and, and I mean this respectfully, like imagine there's a second coming or the first like the Messiah arrives and they're like, let me explain to you what the words literally mean. Like, let's remove all in, of man's interpretation or like attempts to decipher and then actually get told. Right. What I love about the pantheon of gods. It's like if we really were in a simulation, there would be a pantheon. It's like sound design, you know, John Smith. And they're like the great god of sound, like the huntress, you know, and Aphrodite. It's like they're just the programmers, you know, in the great simulation. So there's a story I talked about a little while ago about the red heifer. A lot of people got really excited about that story because it's interesting. The argument that right now I think they should have added to the story, one of the signs is that Allegedly, beginning of September, a red heifer was born in Israel for the first time in 2000 years. And this is a signal of like the, the third temple or whatever, which like signifies like the Messiah will be coming. And, you know, here's my concern. How would you know? Let us go back to the times of Jesus Christ. For many believed he was the Messiah and many believed he was a blasphemer. And that's the issue. I've heard this a lot when I was growing up. People said if Jesus did come back, people would just assume he was a crazy guy. And I'm like, yo, they did back then, too. Right. That's the point. That's I, 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 I'm not a biblical scholar, but I believe a strong reason why Jesus was crucified for daring to to proclaim such a thing or to have people believe it. If the uh, Messiah comes once again. Yeah, no one's going to believe it. A lot of people may. A lot of people may not. There have been many people throughout the years who have claimed to have been the uh, return of Jesus. Look it all up. So I wonder if there will be signs that accompany the return of Jesus Christ. Or, I suppose, for, uh, for those who are Jewish, if it's a sign of the first arrival of the Messiah. What I can say is there's an entire possibility that as these signs bubble up, a charlatan may emerge that people actually believe could be the return of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. How would you know? The interesting thing is people often refer to individuals with long hair and beards as Jesus. And it's because we have these tropes of an image of Jesus with long hair and a beard. But you wouldn't know what the individual would look like. There's speculation about what Jesus actually looked like. There's a composite of the people of the region. And they're like, this is what we believe Jesus looked like. And it's like a dark skinned individual with like 
thick brown, uh, thick blackish hair or whatever. But then you have the traditional European version of Jesus, which is a white man with long brown hair and a beard. You also have Japanese Jesus. And Seamus has talked about this, Seamus Coughlin, that people would always depict Jesus as a part of their culture. And that's normal. And I think the issue is right, because would you really know what the Messiah would look like if they came today? And how would you know for sure? Perhaps there are signs and explanations in the Bible. Perhaps you can comment below and enlighten me. But my point simply here is this. There are many people who believe it is the end of times, no matter what you think. But, but the issue is there's always people who think this. The question is, is it true today or is it just another bit of speculation? Hmm. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on the channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.